May the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all on this Harvest Sunday. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Nice to see you all. Especially nice to see you in here with us this morning. We've not seen any of our young people for a long time, you, so it's nice to see you here this morning. You're hiding from me. Um, I don't really have um, any intimations. I'll talk a bit about um, Christian Aid slightly later on in the service. We acknowledge this day that the Lord has provided food for our needs. The produce of land and sea is a gift for our enjoyment. Thanks be to God for the beautiful harvest that we have received. Our first hymn this morning is We Plough the Fields and Scatter. Can I remind you, you can't sing, but you know, you can sing in your head and you can look at the words and see what they mean to you. We plough the fields and scatter. Charles for that rousing hymn this morning. Let's come to God in prayer. Let's pray. Lord God, we praise you for this, our festival day. We celebrate with thanksgiving your gift of the harvest. You are the creator of the world. Everything we see causes us to praise you. We praise you, Lord of the harvest, for all good things with which you fill our lives, even in this time of pandemic. We praise you for the beauty of the world and the abundance of your gracious gifts. And we praise you for the harvest of love seen in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and for all that has brought to our lives. Father, 
Help us to want to share both that love and the harvest of the world with others. We acknowledge before you that we have been unfaithful stewards of your creation, keeping much for ourselves and spoiling many resources. Forgive us our ingratitude and our complacency. Pardon the selfishness that abuses and misuses your bounty. Help us, Lord, to have grateful hearts that want to use your gifts aright and share what we have with others who are in need. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You, and I don't know if you can see this or not, I want to show you what I brought last Yesterday I brought some grain and some seed for harvest and I put it on top of the piano here and when I came back this morning, look, it's all over Charles's piano. What do you think's happened? It fell over. Well, maybe it did fall over, but I don't think so. I think there's another explanation. Well, I'll show you. I think our two little church mice have been at it. Look, what I found on the piano. I think these two little church mice have come down from the organ and come across the piano. And I think they've been having a good old feed <laughs> on these grains. What do you think? Do you think so? Mm -hmm. I think they have and now I think they're very full and they're very ready to go back to what they normally do one's got the Bible that reads out the Bible and the other's singing so I think they're ready to go back across there to the organ and take up their normal duties but I will leave them there because guess what they have to be disinfected before they go back across <laughs> there. But, I, you know, I think they're probably very grateful, very thankful that they've had something to eat at this harvest time. And that's good because at Harvest Thanksgiving, we tend to think about harvest, but we really should think about Thanksgiving. And, you know, we've been missing you and all your friends that come to church normally on a Sunday, we've been missing seeing them, so I thought we would see them today. So we asked them, including you, a simple question, what are you thankful for? And this is what our children said. I am thankful for getting a puppy at Scarborough Home. I am thankful for my family. I'm thankful for all the lovely food we get to eat, for grapes and ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and I like playing with my cat. Cat fighting! I'm thankful for all the for living in Houston and all the lovely walls that we can go here. I am thankful that my grants and my bubbles have family.
see. Did I put this off? No, I didn't. It's great to see our kids, and it's great to hear what they are thankful for. I don't know what struck you about that. Of course they're thankful for ice cream and apples and things like that, because what would life be without all these treats? But most of them, you'll notice, are grateful for family. I particularly liked when we heard that Callan was grateful that his gran was in his bubble. How nice is that? And I'm sure his gran would love to hear that as well. And you know, I think if this pandemic has done anything for us, it perhaps has made us think um, more clearly about what's important in life. And I think we'll find that a lot of the things that we thought were important before are not so important now. That what is important is family, is the fact that we have food, the fact that we have people who love us. And that's what Harvest Thanksgiving is all about. Yes, it is about celebrating God, giving us a harvest so that we will be provided for. But the harvest is not just that harvest of cereals and crops, etc. It's about the harvest of people, the people round about us who support us and who give us love at this time. And I'm always thankful for our children in church, even when they're hiding from me, Ewan, I'm always thankful for them because they make life just, you know, that bit different. And they're always honest about what they tell us when they tell us what they're thankful for. And so, let's have another hymn. This time we're going to give thanks with a grateful heart. And as you're singing that, think of what you, children of God, are thankful for. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Now I'm going to invite Caroline MacDonald to come and lead us in our scripture reading this morning. Sorry, removing my mask always removes my hearing aid, so just give me a moment, that's it. Today's reading is taken from the message version of the Bible and it's reading from Luke chapter 12 and uh, verse 13, the story of the greedy farmer. Someone out of the crowd said, teacher, 
Order my brother to give me a fair share of the family inheritance. He replied, Mister, what makes you think it's any of my business to be a judge or a mediator for you? Speaking to the people, he went on, Take care. Protect yourself against the least bit of greed. Life is not defined by what you have, even when you have a lot. Then he told them this story. The farm of a certain rich man produced a terrific crop. He talked to himself. What can I do? My barn isn't big enough for this harvest. Then he said, here's what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll gather in all my grain and goods. And I'll say to myself, Self, you've done well. You've got it made. And now you can retire. Take it easy and have the time of your life. Just then, God showed up and said, Fool, tonight you die. And your barn full of goods... Who gets it? That's what happens when you fill your barn with self and not with God. He continued this subject with his disciples. Don't fuss about what's on the table at mealtimes or if the clothes in your closet are in fashion. There's far more to your inner life than the food you put in your stomach. More to your outer appearance than the clothes you hang on your body. Look at the ravens, free and unfettered, not tied down to a job description, carefree in the care of God, and you count far more. Has anyone, by fussing before the mirror, ever gotten taller by so much as an inch? If fussing can even do that, Why fuss at all? Walk into the fields and look at the wild flowers. They don't fuss with their appearance. But have you ever seen colour and design quite like it? The ten best dressed men and women in the country look shabby alongside them. If God gives such attention to the wild flowers, most of them never seen, don't you think he'll attend to you, take pride in you, do his best for you. What I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax, not be so preoccupied with getting, so you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way he works fuss over these things, but you know both God and how he works. Steep yourself in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Don't be afraid of missing out. You're my dearest friends. The Father wants to give you the very kingdom itself. Be generous. Give to the poor. Get yourselves a bank that can't go bankrupt. A bank in heaven, far from bank robbers safe from embezzlers, a bank you can bank on. It's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is, is the place you will most want to be and end up being. Thanks be to God. Today we are celebrating Harvest Thanksgiving. It's not the usual church. For Harvest Thanksgiving, we don't uh, have our usual display and our usual gifts round about. Nonetheless, we can still do what is important. That is, we can give our thanks to God for his goodness to us. And we can show that gratitude by giving to help others at this time. And in order to do that, we are inviting you to give to Christian AIDS Harvest Campaign. You can do this online if you want. If you go into my reflection on the website, there is a link 
to the Christian aid giving. I know Ruth sent out e envelopes to some people, or you can give through um, the offering today, or you can just send a cheque to Angus, who will ensure that it gets to Christian aid. There's all sorts of ways that you can give to help the work of Christian aid. Our scripture today, which Caroline read for us, took us to two passages of Jesus' teaching. Both of the passages, I hope, have an important message for us on this Harvest Thanksgiving Day. I wonder, after you read the first part of the passage, whether you wondered why Jesus seemed to be picking on the rich farmer. It seemed a bit unfair. The rich farmer was doing well. He had worked his land and he had reaped his reward. He seemed to be making provision for his future. Now, that seems like a pretty responsible attitude to me. Isn't that what we're all encouraged to do? Work hard, build up security, secure your future. Well, that is true. But here in this story, the farmer is just representing many people in society. Jesus is suggesting that these people are foolish because they build up wealth. Why? Why would they be foolish? because they built up wealth. It wasn't because they built up wealth, it was because they put all their trust in their possessions and not in God. They leave God out of the whole equation. If you noticed, the farmer talked only to himself. He talked about what he would do he talked about what decisions he would make. There was no sense of gratitude towards God for the blessings that he had bestowed upon him. There was no sense of gratitude to any of the workers who had helped bring this harvest to fruition. There seems to be no trust in God at all. No thought of sharing his bounty with others. It's all very individual. I would say that that would be very true of a lot of people today. The problem is that these people do not realize that their life is not theirs to secure in the first place. It belongs to God and God can demand it back at any time. <clears throat> we are asked instead, <clears throat> yes, to enjoy what we have, but mainly to be grateful to God for his blessing and show that gratitude by sharing with others. If you read the Gospels, you can see that Jesus didn't <clears throat> lead the life of an ascetic. Jesus enjoyed his time eating and drinking with others, and he enjoyed life. However, if you read the Gospels, you will also see that he encouraged everyone to share what they had with the less fortunate. The truth is simply that our lives and our possessions are not ours to own. They belong to God. Perhaps that's hard to understand because we all want to be in charge of our lives and we want to have possessions. In fact, that sense of materialism, that sense of having more and more possessions really has taken over many parts of our world today. The truth is, we do put our trust in things rather than in God. And that's sad. 
Because the truth is, we do belong to God. And that is good news, because it means that if all that we are and all that we have belongs to God, then our future is secure beyond all measure. We don't have to worry about it. So on this day of giving thanks for the harvest, let's take time to thank God for the reassurance of his care for us. And that reassurance can certainly be seen in the second part of that passage from Luke this morning. Because in that passage, Jesus addresses issues of anxiety and trust, faith, and the kingdom of God. I hope that that passage would also give you pause for thought, particularly at this present time, because we really do need to hear of God's love and care for us just now. During the time of lockdown particularly, I took much pleasure and much reassurance from the beauty and the growth that I saw around me. When things were looking very bleak, there were signs of hope in the spring flowers pushing their way through the ground. My garden has blossomed this year with wonderful harvests of fruit. God is good. His world is still producing. He is looking after us. Jesus used all kinds of examples from nature to point out the extent of God's care. I think in this busy, materialistic world in which we live, we need to hear that. We've forgotten the fact that this is God's world, not ours. Intrinsically, it is a beautiful world, and God will look after it. We are but stewards who are asked to play our part. In some senses, we have lost the ability just to enjoy creation for what it is. We are always wanting to make it more. We always want to do something better with it. But I ask you, look at the flowers and the birds and the animals and compare them to our frantic, busy lives. Who, I wonder, has got it right? As I said earlier, perhaps one of the effects of COVID-19 is to make us take stock of our lives in a way we haven't before. Perhaps people have reassessed their priorities. If that is the case, I think it would be no bad thing, particularly if we arrive at the conclusion that we owe so much to God and are therefore moved to give him thanks. Harvest Thanksgiving reminds us of God's goodness to us and it should move us to remember that we are but stewards of this creation and as such, we should always want to do our best for those who are in need. Let us show the thanks that we feel to God by giving to others who are in need of our help. Amen. Now we're going to have a hymn now, a hymn that talks about our world and how its brokenness can be changed for the better. It's 259, Beauty for Brokenness.
we're going to have a prayer to dedicate our offering. Let us pray. Generous God, you have met all our needs in the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life freely. We offer these our gifts with the prayer that our lives may bear fruit in his name. We dedicate ourselves to the task of sharing and helping those who are less fortunate than we are. And we do it in the name of Christ, our generous Saviour. Amen. We continue with our prayer of thanksgiving and for others. Lord, on this special day, we thank you for the harvest of life and for all things that bring us great joy and a sense of satisfaction and fulfilment. We thank you for the harvest of hope that reminds us that you hold all things in the palm of your hand. We thank you for the harvest of joy and delight that we receive from the beautiful things that we can see and hear. We thank you for the harvest that you have given us, but we know that we are given them so that we might help those who have no harvests of their own. So today, Lord, we pray for Christian Aid and other NGOs who work tirelessly to improve the lives of those who are powerless to break out of poverty. We pray that we might contribute to being the answer to their prayers. We pray for those who live with the constant threat of famine or drought. Lord, help us to see that our lifestyles often contribute hugely to the causes of such happenings. We bring before you those who know no harvest because the land is poor and the conditions very variable. Often the good land is snapped up to feed the rich waste. Lord, help us to be aware of the need to trade fairly so that these poor subsistence farmers can be helped. Lord, we have been the recipients of such a wonderful harvest of love through the life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. Help us to be sharers of that love so that it spreads throughout our world. Lord, we would ask that you help us to bear each other's burdens, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. The hymn that brings um, our service to an end is 231, For the Fruits of All Creation. And Charles has given me a wee note that says that the tune is East Acklam. And Francis Jackson, Jackson, the composer of the tune, was 103 last week. He was director of music at York Minster. So we give thanks for his talent in writing such a wonderful tune as we hear him 231 for the fruits of all creation. <laughs>
done for the benediction. Go to the world and do not worry, for you are safe in God's care. Go to the world thankful for the harvest that he has given you. And show that thanks by sharing with others. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you on this day and forevermore.